Good evening, everyone, or whatever time you're watching this. This is going to be the probably the tenth time I tried to do this video. I just keep messing it up. This is the South China Sea video. So, for those of you who don't know, we have the Asian region over here in the subcontinent of India, Sri Lanka, the Maldives, Malaysia, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, Myanmar, right here. We've got the Philippines. Australia's down here. Got a lot of other countries. Got Japan, North and South Korea. Got all these islands, these little dots, these little circles or groups of islands that the United States has defeated Japan in World War II. And Japan has been given back some of their islands, but not all of them. Not all of them. So, this video is going to be about the South China Sea. This is a major trade route. Like when you order stuff offline, you know, whatever the case may be, it has to come through here. Because if not, it would have to go all the way around, and you're not going to be sailing through, you know, these countries, uh, their 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 water space. That's why they have like the, the line around it. That's like their territory. Like, expect my authority. You know what I mean? So, what they would normally do is come down here to get from this side of the world over here to this side of the you know the ocean of the world over here in order to, you know, bring things, trade, commerce, you know oil, gas, you know, whatever they want, if they want to ship it, you know, in a, in a, you know, uh, an oil tanker or a barge or something, they would have to come down here, and they would come through this area, because, as you can see, this is open water, kind of funnel in through here, and go through this strait, you know, this run along this line, and then out into this ocean over here, and then they would move trade, and it goes both ways, back and forth, whatever. And so, the issue, we'll get to Thailand, or excuse me, Taiwan over here, Thailand is here. You know, when ships and stuff are coming through here, you know, they try to take the, the shortest route possible. Because the amount of fuel, the time, you know, time is money, fuel is money people's lives this is like everybody's taking it very serious so china they have a thing called the nine dash line which goes basically from china right here and it just goes all the way like this right here including taiwan I keep getting mixed up and it goes like here and this is all china right here anything off of china's border like a thousand miles a thousand thousand miles whichever one they feel like using in the day belongs to china via quote unquote historical claims so, as you can see over here, we have some stories we'll go through, and we'll click on some of these little icons here. So, China is going to, or they have been since 2010 when I was in Okinawa myself, see it on the news, I first saw on a website I was reading that China is going to come and dump, you know, sediment and sand in the oceans. As we, you know, zoom in here, you can see that there's a lot of islands here. Like I said, the Philippines, they have been taking notice of this, and they're starting to you know, they're starting to come and take care of their islands. They have people that live on these islands. People live out here. You know what I mean? Not many, but it's enough to where, you know, they're your citizens. You care about them, depending on what country you're from. And like I said, China looks at this and says, um, you're in my territory. The like, Philippines is right here. This is the Philippines. These are their islands. And China says, no, these are mine. And then, like I said, these... Vietnam has competing claims. It comes out like this. The Philippines comes out like this. Malaysia is like, no, this is mine. So all these countries here, they're fighting over this territory. Like I said, the shipping lanes and like their navies will bump into each other. They'll have spats where Chinese and Filipino vessels, or navy ships will be ramming into each other, spraying water, trying to keep it as low as a, like a, a one step under actual like firing you know, rockets, you know, you know, uh, torpedoes, you know, big guns and stuff like that. So they're going to intimidate each other. But in the past, like, <clears throat> since like the early 2000s, China is, you know, like I said, they're regional power. They got lots of people. They got all that stuff. And like, you know, most of their cities are starting to come up, whether or not they actually treat their citizens well. Or doing things the right way is a different story. But like I said, they're coming up nonetheless. So China, because they have the most power, they just kind of just do draw a big nine dash line right here, including Taiwan, and say, oh, this is China now. And you, you know, you might say, that's stupid. And like, well, if they have the power, they have the guns that show up in your neighborhood, no matter how stupid it is, what are you going to do about it? The answer is nothing. There's nothing you can do about it because you're going to die. 
but we can take a look here. As you can see, it says China. This is also China. Like I said, this is right off the Philippines. China just come and start dumping stuff here, put missiles, put, you know, a sh you know, put airstrips. They'll put all types of stuff there. You know what I'm saying? So then <clears throat> any ships that go through this area, you know, they'll belong to, you know, China. Hey, give me some money. Hey, what do you got in these crates? Oh, let me get some of that. What do you do? Oh, co complain to the international community so that they can bring it up the next, you know, council. Hey, we condemn this action. Okay, what does that do? Nothing. You can condemn it. Thankfully, they do. But like I said, it doesn't actually physically do anything or get your stuff back or unkill your friends. They got beat down or whatever the case may be. So, zoom in here. Take a look. Oh, man, look at that. I wonder if islands naturally come airstrip shaped. I don't believe they do. So they'll have these, you know, shallow shoals here. And they'll just come and dump, you know, just come and dump sediment and rocks and build foundations. And then, don't oh, look at that. It's just a quote unquote airport, you know, very an airport. You know, some little guard towers, a nice little, really, really, actually, really nice island with bay. And then they have like these. This is this is like some of this stuff is only like a couple feet deep in the middle of the ocean. This this is literally like waist deep water where these little you know scruffy are. And so they got a lot of work to do here. And like I said, China they they can get ten thousand people, get them on boats, and start doing this. They say, hey, you do this now, and it'll happen. So like I said, there's one. And uh, just recently there was a U.S. Navy plane, and even now like Filipino Navy planes, because they buy a lot of stuff from U.S. companies, and you know you know. You know, some French, and they have like their own indigenous Filipino types of things that are coming out. And when they're flying by, you know, they'll get lasers in the eyes trying to damage, like the lasers are powerful, damaging their eyes. You know what I mean? Like just attacking them, threatening them with stuff over the radio. Now the U.S. does it, it threatens, and then like, it's kind of thinks it's funny. I mean, yeah, it is. Like China, like, what are you going to do? I'm like, oh, get away from here. Like, uh, no. Want. And say what you want about that, but. If America were to disappear, I promise that everybody wouldn't just be holding hands, having a good time. Then new powers would arise, and I guarantee they would not even remotely be as kind as the U.S. could be. Sometimes you would have missed that, and we all wouldn't. You know, it's a different, it's a different story, regardless of perfect. So, but then you purposely actually enjoy hurting you, which is what their government here is doing. So, as you can see, this reef here. Let's zoom in. Oh, this one. I haven't, last time I checked, this wasn't even here. Look at that. Guard towers. Because like I said, all the countries around here are going to get mad. Because like I said, these buildings and this island and stuff, like this could be reused if you like sent some Marines, took over the island, you know, kicked their butts, and then just arrested them and kicked them off. And then you, your, you know, Filipinos could have this island and it could be like a strong base for their military and they could protect their ships, you know, their fishing, their fishing waters. Um, a lot of these areas underneath have natural gas and other minerals and resources that are unbelievably important, okay? We'll go over that in a few minutes. But like I said, look at this. They are literally building islands everywhere. There's going to be missiles, lasers, which they do have. All types of stuff. And when you ships are going by, like I said, the United States does not care. We can get damn, so like, we can sail right by their stuff. If they want to launch a missile or act, you know, act a fool, you know, king of act a fool is United States of America right now. And I, what they're doing is they're trying to... China hacked everything that we have. So they have a clone. It's kind of like a week. It's like they basically cloned... They have Black Hawk clones. They got an F-35, F-22 clone. Like, they couldn't just come up with their own. Like, they're just... Like, yeah, we're powerful. Like, it's kind of just, like, lame. Like, bro, you don't... You don't you can't design your own stuff. Like, that's, that's fucking stupid. I mean, yeah. You would have your spies steal secrets and stuff like that. But, like... It's just... I don't know. This is lame. Like, yeah, whatever, dude. So, like I said, they're, they're creating these big islands and like you know look at this looks tiny from a map but like i said this is big enough to put all types of stuff on you don't even know like a submarine start launching submarines start launching planes spy planes you know they have like a big dome with like jamming equipment planes are flying by jammed your stuff and your shit falls out of the sky not good here goes some more so now go up here i don't even know who country this is still china too look at this i already have a functioning oh taiwan sure this place right here has got some got some you know Taiwanese military got to be placed there because China like I said just because it's not in the news doesn't mean you you know 
it's not happening. Like China could send some Marines up there and, you know, Chinese Marines or whatever. And they could try to take down and just like kill you and just, because like I said, China doesn't report what they do. Other people report on them. They don't tell you anything. And they get really mad when they, they tell you like some propaganda stuff and they're just not going to tell you what their actual intentions are. Look at this, more of them. So, and you have the Philippines and all these other things. So China's trying to own all of this so that they can basically be, you know, high-tech pirates and just kind of just shake people down. So, also in the Spratly Islands, the reason why China owns them, so I'm going to put some stuff on screen, is back in the 1988, I believe, China was over here to Spratly Islands. Excuse me. And, um, I can't remember that. Yeah, Spratly Islands are right here. And the Vietnam is right here. They had people on this island. Because China kept sailing their boats by it and then trying to, you know, take it over. So the Vietnam put 64 of their navy, 64 uh, Vietnamese Marines on this island. And then China, they sent their Marines in these little boats and they went after them. And then when they had like a fist fight between all the people and they're like, oh yeah, we're going to get off this island. Oh, I'm going to attack you and kill you. The Chinese Marines, they lost the fist fight battle because the, you know, the Vietnamese, they didn't want to give it up. And then they went back. And then China just opened up the big guns on them and just blew them all to hell. Just blew them up, just body parts floating in the ocean. And then China was like, yeah! Vietnam was sad. And then, again, up here, Vietnam, I don't know a lot of people know this, but you can see this island right here. Like, this is China, and this is Vietnam. So this island is heavily contested all. So they're just going to contest everything because they just want it all. China wants it all. You know, Vietnam, they want their stuff, but like they have, like a lot of these countries are having their own internal issues right now. And that also plays to China's advantage because they're causing some of this stuff. Like they're moving stuff down in here, opening up companies in Cambodia, for example, uh, you know, kind of influencing elections in real ways. And uh, the people who are opening the businesses for China, they do deals with the government, they give them some money. The Chinese mafia dudes, and they're just, you know, they're, they import their own people. So basically China is going to out, it's going to population replacement all these other countries and it'll be China. People complain about it there, but silence. But right after America signed the truce in the north of Vietnam, and the north invaded the south after the United States, you know, they left after the ceasefire, China invades northern Vietnam and takes some of the, the province. Like, it was a little bit, I think over here it might have had more. Over here it might have had more. And then China took it, and, you know, they attacked crazy battles, crazy huge battles. And that, yeah, that, that is real. Because, like I said, like, a lot of people don't know, but, like, whenever the U.S. is doing a war or having in a conflict somewhere, Contrary to popular belief, a lot of people are really happy about it that are not in America because it weakens the enemies of the, you know, of China or, you know, of whoever, and they can swoop in like in the Middle East, Turkey couldn't be happier that Iraq was destabilized and Syria because they want to take that territory over, but they don't like America being there because they can't do anything until we leave, and if we help them out, they won't get anything. So, that being said, let's zoom in here. So then, let's see what is this. Rescue five since a fishing boat and the Chinese mainland capsized in waters of Pangu County in Taiwan off Monday morning. Maritime Patrol in Taiwan and Joint Connect Search Works. That's sad. Rest in peace. That's a very, that's a hard way to go is the ocean. The ocean's a very unforgiving, uh, unforgiving place. Rest in peace. China holds missile drills in the South China Sea amid heightened tension. So, like I said, China believes that this island is part of China people who live on the island, most of them do not believe this. They're like, we're our own country. And every time China hears that, it's kind of like, it just makes them go re, because they're like, no. And, you know, as you can see, this is way down there. Every, like, China is basically bullying companies into being like, you cannot even say that, like, American Airlines say, we're traveling to Taiwan, they have to say Chinese Taipei. People in Taiwan are like, no, we're our own country the whole time, and they just don't even care. Like I said, I wouldn't either. U.S. Airlines changes Taiwan reference on website ahead of Chinese deadline. Because like I said, China will be like, okay, well, if that's how you feel. You can't come, you know, you can't come over here, and, you know, you're losing out a lot of business. It's kind of, it's it seems silly on our end, but, like, it's life and death for these people over here. They really, really leave it, live it seriously. Chinese warships drill near waters in Taiwan. Now... 
some of these little you know, bubble things, they disappear after like a while, a couple months. I could scroll down and see some more. But a lot of the ones over here, there was a lot. China basically cloned a lot of Russian jets and stuff, and they basically stole stuff from Russia. That's why Russia does not want to be allies with China, because then basically their entire um, intellectual properties are going to get ganked by China. And then every China's just going to have a clone military. It's just going to be a bunch of clones. They got the people. They got the resources, you know, because they have slave labor they could do whatever they want they could basically clone massive military and take over this whole area it's like japan in world war ii but worse because the technology is much higher and the population is way way higher and out of control so like i said there's you know china will put continuously have jets crossing into the airspace and going back crossing and going back and taiwan can't really do a whole lot because they don't have a massive military like china does or population but they're going to do what they got to do because i mean they already beat China in the Civil War <clears throat> back in 1949 and 1950, early 1950s, I believe. It was on, I think it was, what island was it? I think it was over here. This island was one of the major battles between like Chiang Kai-shek and Mao Zedong's forces. And, you know, if you didn't study the tides and, you know, made it, it was going to do this massive invasion of this island here with like 20,000 troops, but they only had three fishing boats so it came from this island i can't remember like i said if you know in the comments tell me what island it is and they went to go over and didn't end up so well for the chinese forces because they could only take a couple fishing boats at a time and they had twenty thousand people with 300 little tiny junk boats you tell me how much that is and like the taiwanese had a lot more forces on the island because they had already been you know had been beaten off of mainland and they had to retreat to here which was the republic of china i believe I can't remember. There's two different Chinese governments that sound very similar, okay? And uh, the one is here. It's like the Republic of China. It's like one's like the the People's Republic of China. I, I can't remember what it is. I have to look it up. I'm kind of bumbling it right now. It's kind of embarrassing. <clears throat> then, like I said, Japan's got islands here. And the Philippines is here. So this is like a really contested zone. So like if you veer off the, the path even a little bit, you might sail into one of these islands and, you know, mess around and make somebody angry. So, now we're going to go over here to Japan. Over here, in this area somewhere, Japan has now discovered a buku wealth of a certain type of minerals that will basically make China, it'll screw up their whole world takeover, you know, hacking everything, chai comms, run all the electronics in the world type of thing, because I think it was like upwards of 90% of all electronics in the world most of the in main ingredients they come from China because they have a monopoly on those types of minerals which comes from you know up in the mountains or wherever they get them from because China and Afghanistan share a border and in those mountains and in North Korea too that's why a lot of things in North Korea because the mountains that are here the minerals that they have they don't I guess they don't have them in other places in the world maybe they do and that's where electronics are made and electronics rule the world. So if you rule electronics and all the internet waves and you're hacking and shutting people down who disagree with you, like every time I try to make this video, then you're going to be doing pretty well. So Japan has found all these minerals out here, which they look kind of weird and strange. I'll try to put them on screen. And that could basically take the percentage down that China runs the world from 90 to you know, maybe 70, maybe 50, maybe 40, 30, because like I said, are people going to be buying stuff from China when it's spiked and they just get to steal all your stuff in the computer as soon as you turn online the equipment that you bought with Chinese parts in it? Of course not. So now Japan, they have reactivated their Marine Corps and all of their actual troops. They changed the Article 9 in their constitution, so now they can serve overseas with military, like actual force, because like I think there was some guys in some Japanese guys who went to, I think it was Iraq, and they could not use weapons. They couldn't shoot at people. Their soldiers still deployed, but they couldn't use the weapons. They couldn't shoot at anybody or do anything, so they basically had to hide down, and it was just, that sucks. They had to basically hide out of the way. It might have been Africa. But there was, like, there was a couple of Japanese you know, units that went to Iraq, and you know, they served you know, big ups to Big up to the Japanese for changing their ways. But now they're changing them back a little bit because, like I said, they're not going to sit there and just get creamed and just murdered and just die. Like, ah, eh, no, we're we're done with all that. So they change. And they're being, you know, becoming more, more numerous when it comes to military technology, especially because everybody knows Japan is mega high tech. You already know they're about to have Gundam wings and stuff. So, like I said, this is all very, 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 very close 
you know, people don't realize how close this stuff is. Like up here, we're at uh, what is it, Mount Fuji? Should be like right around here somewhere. We all spent like a month and some change there. Super cold, super duper cold. January to to March first is when we went there. It was cold. January twentieth to March first. Man, that jungle was cold. Man, that jungle was cold. So, like I said. This is like a varying degree because it's like super ice cold here, you know, in the winter time, and then you take a little trip down to Okinawa and it's hot. The Philippines, even hotter. It could be snowing up here and getting burnt down here. So, like I said, it's a very drastic change. So once Japan once Japan is gonna start get digging up these minerals, China's gonna be on some deep prep. Either going ahead and stealing, and then they're gonna they're you know they're starting to expand to Thailand. I don't really think that Thailand is having much of that. Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam are having an issue with the Chinese, uh, you know, companies opening up and stealing all their stuff. But Thailand, you know, as far as I know, they're doing fairly well. And also, Thailand wants to open up a a canal, like the Panama Canal. They're thinking about doing it like right here. So instead of going all the way down here and doing this, it'll cut like twelve hundred miles off because then it could just skate right around here. And then, like I said, China's not going to be owning this. <clears throat> Because like I said, they're already having a tough time letting people have all this stuff. So, you know, Thailand has their issues of why they would never do this, but they're really thinking about it. Imagine they could basically charge people. They become a regional power if they can have this. But down here in the southern island tip of Thailand, this is a, like I was, Malaysia is, is a Muslim country. These are Muslim countries. So the Philippines has a lot of issues because like their southern part is like the Muslims live there and like the Catholics and Christians are up here and it's a problem. We'll go over that later. So if they were to cut off with the with the thing here, with the uh with the canal, they would have to have a bridge <clears throat> that would go over the canal so they can move troops down here because this province will try to break away and become part of Malaysia and then the Muslims will be like, Yeah, be our own thing. That's not me saying that. That's what the Thailand <clears throat> The government, the king of Thailand, that's what his government, that's what they're saying because they have these issues. They deal with them. And, well, that's mean. That's kind of an American thing to, you know, oh, say that. But like other countries, they don't care. They, Especially here in Asia, they legitimately don't care. They're going to fight for whatever they're going to fight for. Then you have Australia. The Australian Navy comes through here fairly often. Let's select a region here. Let's see. Asia. Vietnam. If Vietnam has invited the United States back to try to smoothen international relations, detente is the word, I believe. Uh oh. We've got to wait for everything to load. So, like I said, so Vietnam has invited the United States back just to, you know, to try to smooth things over because, as they see, you know, it'd be good to not always just be angry. The war is over. So they're starting to, you know, kind of ease trade relations and, you know, kind of going back to just normalizing relations with the United States. They've done that with France. It's pretty good. Especially because China is now starting to get a regional power. A lot of smaller countries will look for a very powerful country that's not in their region to guarantee their, their safety. Get the hell out of here. Oh, God damn it. Thanks a lot, bitch. Get the fuck out of here, dude. Seriously? Get the fuck out my shit. Anyway, like I was saying before I was interrupted by a rude app, smaller countries will try to find a, let's say Poland, for example. Poland, Poland, for example, will have the United States come in to be their ally because they can have a large superpower like the United States guarantee their regional sovereignty because the United States does not compete with them in the European markets. They are, we have our own stuff and you know Poland is trying to become its own regional power like and to take the take the juice from Germany as they say. So French helicopter carrier DIX MUD L9015. I'm sure they have a name for it. And the frigate Surakov F7 one F seven eleven are in Vietnam headed to Singapore. Now Vietnam used to be a French Indochina, and you know they fought and defeated the French and kicked them out. But now the French are coming back. It's like I said, people, you know, the war's over. We won. Respect, respect me. Now they're you know they're back. 
Look at this. If Vietnam is expanding its outpost to the Lad Reef, likely driven by chart by recent Chinese threats to its outposts and energy exploration to the southwest. Like I said, there's lots of natural gas, all types of stuff. You can see this waste deep water. You know what I'm saying? So China's like, bro, not having all that. Vietnam's like, no, nah, we have no, we not, we don't have either. You know what I mean? So what is this? An SU-22 crashed in Nguyen, Vietnam. Two pilots are dead. The plane crashed in Nguyen was identified as an SU-22UM-3K training version. 551, belonging to the 921st Regiment. Rest in peace. That's very unfortunate. Rest in peace. That's a, that's a hard job. Let's see what else we got here. 64-year-old scientist, Nova Chekarath. Accused of transferring classified data to Vietnam. Alex, Alexei Temiryov is in jail of leftover. Leftover, yeah. right? That's terrible. Wedding party crash. Van Kang's people. Yeah. Things that happened in Vietnam are very unfortunate. A lot of, there was a lot more. Uh, there was another one down here where there was an Australian ship. See if I can find a picture of it. It shouldn't be there. All right, let's see. Let's see. Jet crash. That's very unfortunate. All these ads. It's craziness here. Hmm. There was an Australian ship that came to visit Vietnam. Anyway, there's an Australian ship that came down here. Because remember, Australia, you know, they're a, the Australian continent. They're an island. And, you know, they are, they're very very friendly with a lot of countries around here but China's you know beginning to give them more because if Australia wants to have some stuff shipped or come through here or whatever you know China's going to be China's going to be stepping on them too so they're kind of like hey you know with our American blokes will come over here and kind of settle this down but China's not letting go they're digging their teeth into this and they're not playing games so they're going to try to come through here Australia you know France Vietnam Germany United States all these countries are going to come through here and say Especially India. India, that's a completely different story. I have, no, yeah, as you can see, India, they have a couple of bases in these countries here because India has got a fairly powerful military and they've been they've been operating aircraft carriers since the 70s and they're they're very good. In, India is a very good military. They have their issues with Sri Lanka and stuff like that. So anyway, so this is a very, very serious, you know, waterway through here. People really, they're not playing about their, you know, their territory because this is very, like, room standing room only type of stuff like i said china they're trying to whap their big you know you know their nine dash line dong um, people are just aren't having it they're just really really not having it the philippines is having a hard time contesting with the waters because most of their time is spent you know drug lords and like this is an archipelago islands just crazy crazy amounts of islands like look at this like you they have marines we would hang out with the filipino you know military and those marines like we'd learned a lot of things about them you know, let's see, we were up here. Let's see, where are we at? Let's see, we were. I can't, let's see where it is. We were right around here. And so, when they're going down into the southern area, that's when people start to, you know, it's like mostly Muslim and other, you know, smaller sects of, sects of, you know, Islam and things like that. And it's like battling, battling. Let's see if we can show you a little bit about that here. Oh Lord, here we go again. <sighs> see, as you can see, lots of explosions, lots of frowny faces, people dying. Little sheriff star, the black little thing is the ISIS. They're you know saying craziness. What do you want? My phone's going crazy. So yeah, let's see what this is. Explosion of rocks must have mass bait city port bridge. There's a bridge here and there's a massive explosion. Like why? What was the point of that? Who knows? Let's see what this is. God, of course, of course you fucking come here. Get out of my face. Thanks, bro. Go away. Go away. Why? Why are you bothering me? Get the fuck out of here. Jesus Christ, that's fucking weird. God fuck off. All right, so it says private chopper bound for Zambonga, Zamboanga City, 
from Catoabo, uh, Cotabato, had an emergency landing in the Dimataling completely jacked. Them. Those who were due to bad weather conditions earlier. Thankfully, they landed. Damn it. Philippines 10 killed in a car bomb attack in southern Philippines. Local sources say it was probably carried out by ISIS. That's very unfortunate. So like I said, they there's a lot more that's going on. And, uh, you know, like I said, it, it, most of the little dots disappear, but at any, you know, given week, you'd see just, like, frowny faces all over this junk. And it's like, what was, let me see, Marawi, right here, like, last year, the, like, 2016, that was a huge battle. The ISIS took over this whole area right here. It was, you know, just held and hold people hostage. You know, it's crazy stuff going on here. I think a lot of stuff, because people come from, they take boats from here, and they just invade and then just take over islands. And like I said, unless you're having people and police or whatever on these islands, like a lot of people might be sympathetic to their causes. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people might be like, yeah, I like, you know, a lot of people, you know, contrary to popular belief, they like ISIS. Like, they're happy. They like it. You know what I'm saying? And if this website wasn't, like, fucking slow as hell, we'd be having this problem right now. Probably because China is hating me right now. So, like I said, we could look at you could go through this all day. It's just crappy. It would normally work on my phone, but anyway. So like I said, uh, there's a lot going on down here. I could probably go on forever and ever and ever. But basically that's it. China's cloning all the military technology by stealing it off the internet or like, you know, hacking and basically everything. And then I mean, yeah, that's what they're doing, man. Like they don't care. They're going for the world domination. And then they're doing the one belt, one road. Let's zoom out here, where they're gonna have you know, yeah, Pakistan here, China, will have built bridges and roads and dams and like in infrastructure projects. Country, they share a little Afghanistan here, as you can see, and that China actually has done patrols in Afghanistan. They send their military doing little patrols, or they're inching, they're branching out, branching out. Southeast Asia, they're building roads, building businesses, building all these things. Like, oh, people are like, oh, how could you hate on China? They're building businesses. Oh, but what they're doing is, it still belongs to China. And they bring in people from China. Because remember, they have billions. A billion plus, like billion point five. I'm sure it's a lot more. They're just not telling us. Into these countries, and they have the people build all the stuff. All the, and they build their self their own apartment buildings, and then they just stay there. And then now you have Chinese population there. And now they vote China. And they vote out. They're allowed to vote. Sounds ridiculous. They're just doing what, yeah, they're just voting your shit out. So basically, just population replacement, willingly, just doing it. Like, doing the same with Africa. And like I said, Pakistan will build roads here, build stuff, trying to get past all this stuff here so they can be on this side, and then they can be on this side, and then they can go straight to Djibouti, right here in Africa. And then in Africa, man, they are there are lots and lots of Chinese people in Africa. Even South Africa has got like fairly fairly sized Chinese population. And in Libya, when the whole 2011 Arab Spring fact thing happened, people pretend to not know about because they're, you know, politically aligned one way. China sent some frigates and stuff, and they would evacuate their foreign nationals. When I heard that, I was like, oh, man, there must be a lot of people in China. Like I said, in Nigeria, there's a lot of Chinese people. I had a buddy of mine who's from Nigeria, and he was, like, sitting there saying, yeah, there's a lot of Chinese people there. Like, what the hell? And there's Chinese people all over Africa. Like I said, they they import their own slave labor. You know what I mean? So, they don't, like I said, they're, they're, they're not concerned how you feel. You know what I'm saying? Like colonization, they'll just basically, instead of taking you, making you think, you know, having trading posts, you know, they'll buy some people for, you know, slaves. Like they bought the slaves from other Africans, I guess. Let's just not get it twisted. Like white people ran out with nets and were just catching dudes out in the jungle. You know what I'm saying? Especially because you're coming from a temperate climate in Europe just to this hot, arid desert or like this super duper dense jungle. Like you're not, and the mosquitoes are just tearing them. Come on. Come on. Seriously. It's just not, you know, like I said, Saudi Arabia, the Arabs come down here and do their thing. Come on. Let's, 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 not, let's, let's not be stupid with this. Everybody's taking advantage of this. Lots of people in the African Union, politicians, they could give a crap about their own people. They really could give a crap about them. And so they do deals with China and like a lot of the African Union members and all the EFF and all that stuff. They'll go to Switzerland. Most of them live in Switzerland. 
and like Africa just suffers because they don't really care. You know what I'm saying? The average lifespan is probably not that high in Africa, but for their leaders, it's much higher because they just go live in China, go live in Switzerland, and they just get all types of stuff. Chinese government helps them out. So the European governments help them out too. So like I said, that's the One Belt, One Road project. And they're trying to basically come through all this, and then they can power Europe. They can power, like, you know, they'll send road people, send people here, do all these roads and all this stuff. And now you're starting to encroach on Russian territory. So they're starting to get pissed. Like, bro, China's is like, China is more than 10 times the size of Russia, but Russia's land mass is humongous. Like I said, China has like 1 point something billion. Russia has like 120 something million. Last I checked, correct me if comments, please. So that's why people are starting to get afraid of China because they're really, like I said, other people were asleep. They're looking at Iraq. You know what I'm saying? Like Iraq right here. It's very. It's actually fairly small. Afghanistan, which is over here. While all that's going on, people are crying about that. Everybody's making moves. Like People are going to say stuff about that because they wish that they could be personally doing it themselves. And if you don't believe that, yeah, wait till America, like I said, if America leaves Iraq, Turkey, going to take that bitch over. That's what they're trying to do. So Turkey's taking over taking over northern Syria. They're having their people swing down here. And that's what, you know, here's Aleppo. And then they have Idlib over here. You know what I mean? And they're turning it into Turkey. And Turkey's sending hundreds of thousands and millions of people up into these countries right here. And Albania and such. And the Muslims, large Muslim population. And then they're voting and waving Turkish flag. It's like I said. People are taking over. The world is not, like, they're not just hanging out, just watching TV, like, you know, just doing their little thing, like people in America just going home and doing whatever. The governments are, are making moves. They don't care. They really don't care. In India, they're coming up there to lean more towards America because they're starting to realize that America now, because of the current administration, is a lot more friendly towards, I guess, types of people and ideologies that are more similar to the American way. I guess more, um, because I said, Indian, people from India come to America, they they get on fairly well. They do well in America, because they, they, it's just the way that they their culture is, they do well in America. You know what I'm saying? So, and now that's why China and India, they have similar sized populations. You know, here's Nepal, the Himalayas, Tibet, and China is moving some missile systems and, like, their new stealth plane that they hacked from everybody else in the damn world. Moving it up here. This is relatively flatter than this. So they're going to swoop down from the Himalayas and launch missiles to try to attack India and China. This made lots of military deals and friendly friend deals with Pakistan. So India and Pakistan are not friendly with each other. I'm sure they'll do deals like, yeah, they'll have like some handshake and stuff on TV. It's not going to twist it. They're, they fought wars already back in the 60s. Uh, in the 70s and in the 90s, the Cargill Wars with India and, you know, India and Pakistan. And, you know, there's all types of stuff that happen between them. So let's not even get it twisted. Like, that's why they're starting to mess with it. Because America has issues with Pakistan and China. Because of Pakistan because of the whole, the Arwan deal, Hillary Clinton and all the hacking and all the computer stuff. Like I said, all those kids, the Arwans from Pakistan, friends with China, all of our stuff gets hacked. And the server, the, the Kling Klong server, it goes to Pakistan. Oh, they handed it to China. Oh, so that's why India is starting to lean towards us because they're realizing, yo, this is a very unfriendly neighborhood. Except, you know, down here, you know, they're doing quite well. Sri Lanka, not so much. But India's, you know, it's very general terms of speaking. Of. Like I said, it's kind of like the issue. So like I said, that's the South China Sea video. There's a lot more. Japan, their militaries, you know, hopefully they have Gundam wings to offset the mass advantage that China has, but pretty much all of these countries down here, they're not necessarily friendly with each other on the military terms, but when it comes to China, like, you know, the common enemy, they're just going to have to, you know, deal with it. So I'll try to try to do a little bit more in depth for certain, some more things. It just took me a long time to do this video because <clears throat> this website is not very friendly with the speed and uh, it's just, I don't know, it's just acting weird. So anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Come on. Come on, little buddy. You can do it. Come on.